can get I can get by this chapter. This chapter was good. It had uh, certainly some moments where I appreciate it. It was just the ending which I actually am gonna curse a little bit. It's too confusing. And the only problem is that confusing is usually good. But not in Uda's case, so, at least not for me, because it takes such a freaking ass long time before that confusing finally gets answered. Then again, the confusion part is one of the most things that people look forward to when it comes to One Piece. So we'll see what is this theory and what is this truth. Yes, the One Piece chapter 918. And first of all, we are entering the final chapters of the uh, Grand Fleet. And this time we're only going to see the captains and their flags. I don't think we have seen those before. Well, maybe except Barter Romeo's ones. As well as the name of the pirate crew. Either way, Luffy defeated... And this is the Angry Anime fan, yeah? Luffy defeated Lord... Uh, no, not Lord. Holdem in one move. Which is actually surprising to a lot of people. Because, well, apparently Holdem was that powerful. But Luffy, he defeated Katakuri. There's no way someone as Holdem would have been powerful enough to even dent Luffy. So then uh, Luffy grabs Tama back in midair and then begins to run, and he then sees the ba the ba the back of speed and thinks it's a horse, but it turns out it's not a horse; it is Speed who has well that thing. The fact that she is being embraced like that seems to create a thrilling sensation. In fact, wh how does real life horses actually feel when they are being well, you know, re ridden? And here comes the real strange part. As um, as Speed tries to throw off Tama, uh, Luffy tells Tama, "No, no, no." As Speed tries to throw off Luffy and Tama, Luffy tells Tama to make a bang a dango, and she does. Uh, according to um, Luffy, he thinks that she can control the horse if he does that. But Tama says it doesn't work on humans. But when Speed surprisingly eats the dango, she actually becomes a little bit more obedient, revealing actually that, I mean, and the, when Tom asks why, Luffy just pulls the argument, probably because the thing is half horse. I mean, that's typical Oda or, or One Piece humor logic, and I love that kind of logic, because it doesn't have to make sense all the time. I hate sense. Sense is what's destroyed society. Although I do uh, hypocritically sometimes ask for sense, because there's some things you don't understand. But the most outrageous things in uh, fictionality, that's what I like. But it appears, though, that those... So, this seems to imply, at least, uh, well, granted, this is an artificial stone fruit, but this seems to imply that um, Tama can actually tame anyone who have eaten a Soen devil fruit. Although it appears, though, that only she can, well... Uh, uh, control them because when Luffy asked speed talk back what when uh, um, Tama talked speed obeyed so either way uh, and then we get to a very sweet scene when Tama compares Luffy to Ace uh, and hugs him from behind I have to say that scene it's, it's very adorable actually it's very adorable it's just that I mean Tama is a little kid and Luffy well he has a mind of a kid it's just that uh, Luffy can surprisingly, well, I wouldn't say, it's half true. I was going to say that Luffy can show a pretty kind side to kids, although that is also not extremely true. It's the fact that he's very harsh against kids, which is probably one thing I like about him. But it doesn't mean he is a complete jerk against a kid. He usually treats a kid like, it's already, like the kid is an already an adult, and that can surprisingly make a lot of kids, uh, well, like him a lot. And um, Tama saw Ace in, a, in, in Luffy, and it's granted, Luffy has yet to tell Tama who Ace really was to him. Either way, we get to the scene of uh, Basil Hawkins and um, Law, and strangely enough, Law immediately shows his power. He sees the tattoos, and he tries to slash uh, Hawkins, but Hawkins, uh, of course, block it with his devil fruit, and immediately recognizes his Trafalgar Law as he takes off the hat and the clash of the blades. Here, Law actually says a very strange line. Either he's being sarcastic, or he's saying something else. It's something like, uh, I don't like taking lives. After all, I'm a doctor. I mean, he had no problem taking lives before, so I think he's sarcastic in this situation. Uh, I mean, uh, 
if he doesn't like to take lives because he's a doctor, then he and Chopper will get along even more, I mean. I mean, but he had no problem trying to kill off uh, Don Flamingo's troops, but then again, those people were assholes, and they deserved their deaths, although they did not really get one. And he did deliver a lot of pirate hearts. And then there's that Rocky Port incident where a lot of people are saying that. So yeah, I think he's being sarcastic when he says that. And Hawkins immediately greets uh, Law and says that his plans are already revealed. And then they hear the news that, well, Holdem has fallen to Law Luffy as uh, Zoro rides with Ukuki with, with the dog taking it away uh, with all the food. Uh, immediately... Law gets on the thing and and shoes out Soro for not only ended up on the most wanted list but also not on uh, having not been staying in Kuri, but Soro only smiles because now they can go to the leftover town where they share all the f delicious food to the starving people. I have to say that scene is also pretty sweet, and even when it seems like the why the beast pirates try to interfere. Luffy just smacks them up by bringing clean water. And then it says, if anyone asking, it is just I who brought it, Luffy Taro. As uh, Tama eats a delicious apple. Of course, Luffy, though, despite the fact that he brought the food, he's still pretty selfish enough to say, I want the meat, too. Meanwhile, J ha Hawkins is talking to someone. Who he is talking to, we don't know. But Tama can only eat the apple, as Luffy swears to her that... Uh, uh, but uh, by the time, the, w until we will, oh no, sorry, how do I say this? Until this place is uh, a place where you can eat, you feel every day, we will not leave this country. And um, the words when he says that, like, we'll make, you, uh, make it a place where you can eat, you feel every day. Tama once again thinks of Ace, and Ace says something similar. The next time we come to this country, we'll make it one where you can eat, you feel. So once again, it shows a little bit that Luffy has inherited the Ace's spirits. I mean, granted, they were brothers. So yeah, this chapter really had the feels, especially with the Tama scene. Tama do call Luffy big bro, but uh, now I think he really Luffy is like a big brother. But then comes the ending of the chapter, and that one is the really confusing one. And it's a confusing one where I actually become a lot of aggravated. Law, who has uh, catch a ride on the ship, on the vessel, as you know, do, do say that Jack will undoubtedly be notified by this, but that Luffy should be able to fight Jack. But instead, he says that they're gonna go to the ruins of Odin Castle at the peak, because there's some they're gonna meet one of ghosts. As Soro just says, "Yeah, you're in for a surprise," because I was shocked too. You're about to learn an unbelievable truth as we get close to some gravestones. Of retainers and the people there, their name being Kinemon, Kanjiro, Raisu, Kosuki Momonosuke, no Kosuki Momonosuke, and Kosuki Oden. What the hell? What the hell are that? What do you mean ghosts? This is the reason why I did not really like uh, that final scene. I mean, it's great for fearing, but what I'm trying to say is, what do they mean? Do they mean A, Kinemon and uh, Momonosuke, as well as the other two retainers, have been dead all along? It's just that their spirits are alive in new bodies by some kind of devil fruit? I mean, that can't be happened, because Luffy ate the revive revive fruit, and there is only one. And that only works on him. Two, those are fake graves. They fake their deaths. And, uh, well, but then again, they are pursued. Which comes to the third thing. They still need to eat, sleep, get afraid, and they bleed. That does not really sound like people that are zombies or anything else. So what is going on here? And from start to finish, there has been something about Wano Kuri that a lot of theorists have been guessing about, and that is... There is an inconsistent in time in this uh, island. And not only because uh, Wanokuri is stuck in the samurai period, but also, also because there's something about what the other characters have said that does not add up. And is this one of them? 
something is not right here. And we are getting questions, not answers. And I hate when we get questions and not answers. So please answer this question immediately last week. What are those graves? And why are Kinemon and the rest uh, the ghosts of Wano? And if they are dead, then why can they, why are they alive? And if they are alive, then why do they have gravestones? Just answer that very simple question. It can't be that complicated. You give me your thoughts if you have any.